All right. Hey, everybody. We're back with another news segment here for you. This one here, we're going to start this one off quick and easy, but tell you that uh, Ford Expedition 2024 Ford Expeditions have uh, reached $9,250 off, and it's good through, it's actually in May, but it's good through July. I saw in here somewhere... Uh, wherever it's said in here, through July 8th of 2024. That is good news. Um, it's interesting in the fact that, like I said, we're on a 2024, you're getting 10 grand off on a technically a $60,000 vehicle. That's pretty impressive. So um, um, so good good on Ford for starting to do these, and it's starting to show that uh, the discounts we're starting to see in the truck market are starting to carry over to the SUV market now, too. So a lot of good coming from this. Uh, one interesting thing that is funny, even at MSRP, if you look at this, Look at the price of MSRP for a Max. This is the biggest version of the ex Expedition you can get. This is a beast of a vehicle, okay? $65,000. Okay, this thing is just a beast of a truck. And you look at this thing and realize that you could actually have all of this for about the same money as it costs for a Land Rover, but then you take ten grand off, or, or a Land Cruiser, Toyota Land Cruiser, you take ten grand off of this, and you can have this for basically the max size, biggest one for uh, less ten thousand less than a Land Cruiser. That's just crazy in the world today uh, for me to see. My wife wanted one of these forever, and we just never could afford one when the kids were little. But she wanted one, uh, this or one of the uh, um, extended Tahoes, the suburban ones, um, you know, to be able to have that space. We never could get it. We didn't have the money at the time when the kids were little but this was always kind of one of those dream vehicles at the time rather than a minivan um and go think it how crazy is that that in today's world it's almost uh coming in at standard normal uh comparable to a land cruiser or a forerunner <laughs> it's pretty pretty insane so anyway but we are moving on from that and going to the next one here and this one here uh we have the uh, ford maverick is getting some changes slight little changes um for 2025 you can see they're getting a new grill different headlights on here what else do they say um it's uh a sportier version of the tiny truck blacked out grills uh sizable lower air intake it's got some pretty new wheels we'll show you this stuff on here but uh the new 2025 Maverick's going to have some of these refreshed uh, things on here that we're going to see on here. It's got the more vertical grill in here. You can see all this stuff on here. It's pretty neat, the different wheels that are on it. Uh, you can read this if you want to, but pretty unique looking little truck. I like it. So uh, refresh coming for the Maverick 2025. <coughs> and uh, uh, they're thinking it's going to be under the ST badge for what we're seeing here for this package. Okay, it's still unclear what the Sporty Maverick will be called, uh, but an ST badging is what they're assuming would be the obvious choice. So we're going to find out. It's pretty sad that we're already in the end of May. It's basically almost June. Sorry, hang on. <coughs> Sorry, a little flum stuck there, but... Um, it's pretty sad that it's it's almost June of 2024, and we don't know what the 2025 is going to look like yet. They should actually be in production in two months. You know, it's pretty sad that that's the world we live in today. But anyway, that's where we're coming in at. Gives you some specs on it right here, uh, some of the details. Moving on from there, this one here. Ford has issued 25 recalls in the first 19 weeks of 2024. Setting records again. Okay, they've set records the last three years in a row with the most recalls. They've won it every single year, and then they are again. But look at this. 25 recalls in 19 weeks. That's basically almost one and a half, close to one and a half recalls a week through Ford. A week. Pretty crazy. Uh, they go through and tell you what they are, which ones they are on here, which, you know, we've covered a lot of these already for you. Uh, right here, it also in fairness to Ford, FCA USA, the American Arm of Stellantis, has had similar recalls filed. It's uh, issued 21 recalls this year, though only affecting a little over a million cars compared to uh, 2 million and whatever they got on here. Um, moving down the list, Hyundai and BMW tied at 11. Uh, this year, Forest River Inc. 24, which is a, that's a RV. That's, they make campers 24 recalls. Uh, they don't give you too much more info in here, but, uh, like I said, pretty crazy Ford. That, that's pretty crazy. 25 recalls in 19 weeks. You know, that's, like I said, they set a record every year. They've done it for three years in a row. I bet they go five. I bet they go five before they actually even think about changing anything around. Now, going to this one right here, there's two interesting articles. This one here is a shocker, and I'm probably going to use this one as the thumbnail. 
And now, unfortunately, I am not paying a premium subscription to Asian Times uh, to be able to finish this article. But that's okay. We got enough of the power right here in this simple article. Okay, this is Asia Times. Okay, you can see it up here at the top, Asia Times. So it says right here, U.S. auto industry scam, overpriced parts and repairs. So this is not an article meant for us. This is an article that is meant for people over in Asia that they read and learn about things that go on here. This is how they see us. Inviting China makers to build U.S. plants may be the quickest way to raise U.S. working families, living standards. I don't know if I buy into all that, but at least they noticed right here. The living U.S. working families' living standards are in jeopardy. They over there notice what we have going on here, okay? And they're even, you know, obviously this would benefit them, but they're talking about how <laughs> we, our families are in crisis over here. They're not lying. Scroll down here. Look at the simple power of this, what, we got, what we're going to see right here. Okay, simple power here. The U.S. auto industry overcharges consumers for motor vehicle parts. Okay, while pricing vehicles outside the range, well, price, not, and I'll say there's two things here. Say about they are overcharging consumers for motor vehicle parts, and while pricing vehicles outside the range of most U.S. households, that keeps profit margins high on new vehicles. Sales of new passenger car, cars and trucks are stagnant. But the industry compensates by selling expensive parts to consumers who keep their vehicles on the road longer. The cost of a new car has risen up by about 40% since 1991. It's obviously gone much higher than that. Uh, while the cost of repairs has nearly doubled, they've been much higher than that. As the above chart shows that we can't access, the cost of auto repair, meanwhile, has tripled. Okay. Nearly three quarters of Americans depend on their cars to get to work, according to uh, statistics.com. For most commuters, public transportation is not an option. American cities lack the uh, infrastructure to move people to their jobs. Interesting article, even though this is all we can re read about it, but it kind of hits home really hard when other countries are talking about our U.S. auto industry scam. They're talking about our over how the industry overcharges consumers for vehicle parts, how they talk about our uh, the pricing vehicles outside the range of the U.S. households. OK, um, you know, it's just it's pretty interesting that the world sees the stupidity of the problems that we have over here and how ridiculous it is. And they're even giving solutions for it right here. Uh, the quick, you know, again, we don't want these here, but inviting Chinese makers to build U.S. plants may be the quickest way to, but right here, raise U.S. working families' living, living of standards, okay? Again, just a sad shame what goes on here in our country with the automotive industry. Blows my mind. Moving on quick from there. Uh, right here. Uh, here's another example of that. Here we just got done talking about. Okay, U.S. auto industry scams. Okay, well, here's one for you. California DA is suing Progressive and United States Auto Insurance uh, insurers for lowballing and screwing drivers. So basically, in a nutshell, what they're saying is... Uh, that this Pamela Price, who's a DA, um, she is saying that Progressive and USAA, um, what they do is they lowball the values of the vehicle so they can total them quicker. Means that the owners of the cars get way less money back, but then they can, instead of having to repair the vehicle, they can sell it at salvage auction and make more money on it. Um, they have been sued for this before. This DA is going after them again for this and saying it's ridiculous and they're getting tired of it. Um, and uh, but also, like I said, you can read this article. All you got to do is just go. If you want to read this article, just type in car scoops, California DA sues progressive. It'll pop right up for you uh, so you can read the rest of this. Or if you want to pause it, go ahead. Um, but uh, so they say nature of the transaction creates a dark incentive for companies. The lawsuit claims if an insurer can minimize the actual cash value payment to the insured, uh, but never. No, nevertheless, total the vehicle and sell the vehicle for scrap. It minimizes indemnity loss on the claim. Um, they responded um, saying that, you know, they look forward to seeing you in court. Uh, but it says right here, this company, okay, it says right here, uh, the company USAA was also previously sued in 2019 for allegedly undervaluing vehicles. It won a summary judgment after the judge in the case found no evidence that a state regulator had ever dis 
described its evaluations as improper, illegal, unethical, unfair, otherwise inappropriate, BS, whatever the case is. We know insurance companies screw us every opportunity they get. At least they're the DA, and uh, weird as it is, she's in California, but going after them, I hope they take them for everything they got. Like I said, I'm so sick of insurance companies and their scams. So tired of all the scams. But anyway, that's our news feed for today, and uh, we'll be back with more for you real soon. Thanks for watching.